Study Smart series brought to you by the Academy features Will Robbins, a past pupil and study expert, here to show you his seven steps towards achieving what he did in his Leaving Cert, and myself, David Lewis, maths teacher, biology teacher, and study skills coach here at the Dublin Academy. Hey guys, welcome back to episode six of our Study Smart series with myself, David Lewis, and Will, and Will Robbins, the creator and author of all the pieces that you are, you are learning from and, and reading at the moment. And in, to, in today's session, what we are gonna look at is, it was entitled, I think, how to plug into the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, and the Matrix, absolutely fascinating film. Uh, I love the, the theories and stuff behind it and the, yeah. the, 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 the fan stuff, and I'm really, really into it. Uh, but when I got through this piece, I kind of felt, well, you've actually empowered me with a load of ways to take this information that I have to put into my head so I can, on a day of an exam, take it outside my head and put it on a piece of paper. Yeah. Because for a lot of people, they might perform well in a class, they might understand something when the teacher's gone through it, if they were speaking about it or if they were creating, a, doing a practical. For, but for a lot of people, getting all the information that leads through into their head is, is the problem because there's yeah. so much of it. Uh, and Will, if you could take it away and tell us how we can plug into the matrix. Yeah, so uh, I got a bit creative creative with that title and um, but I think yeah it is uh, there's this scene in the matrix where uh, Neo kind of uploads um, all the skills he needs to, to do uh, flawless Kung Fu uh, to his brain and I think uh, when I was watching it and probably a few other students they were, they were thinking like imagine I could do that with my with all my textbooks you know uh, leaving cert and all the other exams would be a breeze but uh, yeah. fortunately we don't have that ability yet and um, Elon Musk is, is working on, on something with Neuralink, but uh, that's not gonna be there for us. So yeah, all, all we kind of have at our disposal is these memory techniques uh, that I have kind of laid out in this post. Um, and like people kind of rail against the fact that, you know, the Leaving Cert's a memory exam and, you know, people with, with, good, uh, with good memories are, it's unfair because they just have such an advantage. Um, but what I try to kind of get at in this post is that good memories, you know, like like most things, are are made not born. You know, and mm -hmm. um, they're for the for the most part, there there are a lot of things that you can do to really boost your memory, and uh, um, just most people kind of use um, the defunct techniques, um, and you know they aren't they aren't fully kind of optimizing their study for, for memorization, and um, so. I kind of I tried to, to draw the distinction between low utility and uh, high utility study activities, and um, obviously with, with the caveat first of all as we covered in the last post that understanding should should precede memory, um, but yeah understanding alone is, is not sufficient as we mentioned, um, and once you actually understand something you still have to kind of put in the reps to upload it to your brain so you're able to put it down on paper and. Um, so kind of low utility study activities that you know we see a lot of students using um, and, and I used myself to an extent last year is they're like uh, rereading, highlighting um, and just you know copy out, copying down word for word uh, what the teacher said mm -hmm. um, and people might be kind of a bit aghast at this because like they think they're being productive when they're, when they're doing this stuff um, but there's really not much kind of cognitive effort involved in those activities. Um, you're not making your brain kind of work hard to really encode the information and um, you're just kind of um, studying passively um, and I'm sure you see a lot, you know, a lot of students doing this mm -hmm. and so well, I think um, the best thing like you can do for your study is really just um, see use some of these low utility uh, techniques for, for more uh, high utility ones and uh, some of the most like bang for your book study techniques um, out there would be they're, they're all laid out in this great book uh, called Make It Stick um, and there's spaced repetition uh, testing or active recall interleaving and uh, category, categorization um, so yeah happy to, to delve into those if, yeah yeah. 100% before, before we get into it just the, the idea of fooling themselves is something we saw learn and how to learn as well yeah uh, you, you think you're getting stuff done you got time on uh, you got time there but again it's not deep work yeah uh, you, and there was this per, there was this student a uh, brilliant student a uh, lovely person who was in my grinds a number of years ago and she had my biology notes and when I was speaking she was on like other pages highlighting the notes because the second she got the notes she had to highlight everything and actually she highlighted absolutely everything so she realistically highlighted nothing now it looked great but you did like yeah. none of it that's meant to stand out. 
So it's not saying like don't use a highlighter, but just if you think you're highlighting it, doesn't mean it's in here. Yeah, the same way as we said in the last post, if I gave you the A4 sheet, here you go, or here are the notes, doesn't mean it's in here yet. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, um, sorry, we can... You know, yeah, it, it looks pretty, you know, with the, the colourful highlighters and stuff, yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's not going to be good um, pay off for your time. So, yeah, some of the, some of the better ones are um, Active Recall. So, mm -hmm. um, that's just testing, and that's basically when you test yourself on something, um, you're kind of, you know, you have to actively try and recall it from, from, your, uh, from your memory, and that's just strengthening um, the, the connections in your brain for that information. Um, so, every time you test yourself on something, um, you're kind of deepening those connections um, and it pairs really well with um, space repetition mm -hmm. um, so space repetition it's one of the ones that you, you don't actually have to put a whole lot more effort into to use space repetition but it's incredibly powerful so kind of back in the, the late 1880s there was a, a German a psychologist Herman Ebbinghaus um, and he basically um, taught himself a bunch of kind of gibberish um, and you know random strings of numbers and, and letters uh, and um, he then kind of tested himself on how well he could remember remember them um, and then what he found was um, you know he, he basically discovered he, pl he plotted his results on on a chart and that's now known as the forgetting curve so um, the forgetting curve uh, which is, is in the essay uh, basically shows how and um, memory exponentially decays over time after you learn something and um, but every time you recall it and like you use that recall you test yourself it returns to a uh, hundred percent and you're slower to lose that information the next time and um, so that's why it's it's incredibly powerful to space out your um, repetitions of a certain subject um, at strategically placed inter intervals to um, interrupt the forgetting curve um, and you know it helps you remember it for, for uh, a lot longer and there's you know uh, reams and reams of, of research written on this uh, and I won't uh, bore you or, or the students with it all but um, yeah so basically the, the research indicates that when you study something it's probably best to study it a day later three days later a week later a month later um, and then probably just for for the exam if you, if you want to do that Mm -hmm. um, and as to like ways to do this, you can use uh, physical flashcards. And mm -hmm. um, but if you're anything like me, you might you know lose them or, or they might get messy. And um, you could use there's a really good app called Anki. Um, and there's a, a whole bunch of apps: Remnote, Neurocache, uh, Roam Research. Like a lot of people have um, have invested into this space. And um, because you can really augment your memory stuff if you kind of space it out strategically and it doesn't take a whole lot of work you know you're just uh studying stuff at different times and um, instead of saying cramming it you know once before the mocks once before the leaving which tends to be the the traditional uh route and um, so that's a that's a really powerful one and i think something that uh students should really adopt um, and it's it's pretty low hanging fruit and um, and then other other techniques are uh, interleaving so interleaving is basically the mixing up of different uh, study topics within the same study session. Mm -hmm. So I think a good example of this would be say you're doing differentiation um, and you're just studying a bunch of the same questions, say a quotient real question, and you read the example and then you do like a whole page of, of the quotient real questions. Um, you're, it's going to get easier uh, over time because you know what you have to do basically you know um, how to apply the formula and you can just apply it and there's your answer um, but in an exam you know the questions are all mixed up so you need to know not only how to apply the formula but when and um, so that's why I think interleaving is powerful because it breaks up the kind of um, it, it, it strips back that kind of easiness of, of just applying the same thing over and over again and actually makes you do the hard work of figuring out when to apply the formula that you're learning. So practically, um, you might like mix up um, quotient real questions with other type of questions, with like more kind of hands-on uh, project Nazi questions or whatever. Just I think mixing it up is uh, is definitely a good idea. You know, to to make it you know a bit harder on yourself in the moment, but uh, a lot easier for yourself further down the road.
Yeah, I always I always find that that like you know say we're doing trigonometry we do trigonometry for three weeks and then we have a, a homework is trigonometry and then the midterm we do is trigonometry and everything you're practicing is trigonometry 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 then we go to say a mock and suddenly you haven't seen trigonometry for a long time so the space repetition because you haven't hit it yeah in. yeah and suddenly you were an expert but now you're down to not scratch but like you've lost a lot of what you had yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe you don't even know when to use it because you've got trigonometry but then also you've got the line in the circle why, what's the difference yeah, in the question yeah. so it actually by, by combining all those things makes you uh, it would make you more of a master of the of the topic yeah. than just somebody who has uh, you said, like wrote learned or yeah. uh, to an extent wrote learned for a certain topic like that yeah. so the interleaving is, is crucial I feel a good way to do this for any subject would just be to, to do a bunch of papers because mm. they're naturally they're going to be like a mix of different mm. topics some students you do need to do the trigonometry 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 but then when you're on the next chapter let's just say you're doing the circle all those questions jumping back in and, inter and throwing a few in and then once you're ready with with interleaving a bit more and a bit more then the papers are yeah. the place to be 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the kind of underlying tenet of all this is that uh the more um kind of easy that you feel the study is in the moment probably the less helpful it is and mm. um, they kind of create illusions of confidence mm. these uh like say uh, rereading highlighting reading over a, a formula and thinking that you would know how to get the solution if you actually did it but mm. you know you, you probably wouldn't mm. um and you know real learning happens when you have that sense of disfluency because like it doesn't fully makes sense to you but that's when you actually kind of make that connection and you can make that leap forward in learning yeah um, and then the last one is categorization which we were talking a bit about before um, and that's kind of scoping out the subject and um, figuring out how everything fits together and um, that's the whole understanding piece and that actually is a real boost to memory as well and uh, there are some really really good books on this um, how to be a straight ice a student by Cal Newport and um, covers a lot of things but this these techniques are are, um, are covered in depth as well learning how to learn that course online um, and mind for numbers and make it stick as well um, but yeah there, there are some good techniques I, I came up with a metaphor during during that there so yes yeah. it's, it's terrible let me know and well maybe Richard, Richard Feynman might not be happy with this but sometimes you notice that like you know people are it's almost like for the leaders or people are training to play a soccer game or to play a rugby game by going for a walk around the park well it's better than absolutely nothing you know it's it, and it kind of links it it's 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 irrelevant to the game that you're actually going to play on the day uh, and that's why all those things while a little bit uncomfortable now it is definitely better to be uncomfortable now so you're at a higher level on game day like it's probably easier to walk around the park now than to do sprints and then to bring a football into it and to play practice games and stuff yeah. but when it comes to actual game day you are more prepared to actually perform and that's that's what we're trying to do we're trying to yeah. get you to there by getting getting incrementally better over time as we said so then on the day you are your best self to perform the quote from Seneca sweat or sweat more in, in peace time bleed less in, uh, in more time um, but yeah just to your point there there, there was uh, these guys, the Bra Dreyfus brothers, um, in the eighties, and, and they, um, coined this this term for uh, for learning the, the Dreyfus model, um, and what they kind of found was that learning happens at, at levels of abstraction. So, say like a, a pretty simple um, sum in your book is pretty abstracted from the thing you'll actually face mm -hmm. on the reading cert. So. Um, as you build up that confidence, getting as close as you can to, to exam conditions uh, and less abstracted from the real thing um, is only going to be a good thing. Yeah, perfect. Cool. Okay, fantastic. Well, anyway, uh, thanks very much for, for joining us here, guys. Hope a few of those techniques uh, helped you out and maybe even it was just an idea of kind of waking you up from potentially something that's not uh, giving you the most bang for your buck in terms of time. But uh, we'll see you again in the next one.